Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church on this Reformation Sunday as we gather together on this day of the church here to celebrate the day of the Reformation, which is actually on October 31st, as most of you already know. Um, we, we gather together to remember what God did through Martin Luther uh, to bring about the Reformation, a rediscovery of the gospel. And our meditation this morning will be based on our epistle reading from the book of Romans. Uh, hopefully you've already grabbed your bulletin on the way in. The entire order of service is printed there for you. For those of you joining us from afar via our YouTube channel, we welcome you in the name of the Lord. We're glad you found us. If this is your first time visiting us, my name is Reverend Louis Bolt. I'm the pastor here at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Hammond, Louisiana. I'm glad you could join us. Uh, during the course of the service, uh, I will invite you to stand as you are able, um, and that includes you worshiping at home, and I'll leave that to your discretion of, of how you do that. Um, for each of the hymns that we'll be singing, there will be a brief introduction, and then we'll begin singing after that. I don't think there are any other surprises in store for us this morning, so let us begin with a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, you have brought us to your holy house, this place where your glory dwells, to hear your word. It is a word that does great things. It is a word that convicts us of our sins and turns us in repentant faith toward our Savior, Jesus Christ, and gives us that forgiveness that he has won for us and freely pours out upon us. Bless this time that we have together as we give you thanks and praise for everything that you continue to do for us through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is in Adam We Have All Been One, hymn 569. Oh 
Our service continues with confession and absolution. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We'll have a period of silence for reflection on God's word and for self-examination. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Our service will continue with the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is a feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast. A victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For the Lamb who was 
slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. This is a feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies. And grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as our service continues as we speak our verse of the month from Romans chapter 3, verses 21 and 22a. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. Romans 3, 21 and 22a. The first reading for Reformation Sunday is from Revelation chapter 14. John writes these words. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth for to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our service continues as we speak responsibly. Verses of Psalm 46 with parts for the entire congregation indicated by a C and in bold. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling, Selah. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress, Selah. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle reading is from Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, 
he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you're able for the Alleluia verse. Alleluia, Lord, who shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated for the sermon. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, you and I live in a world that has a particular point of view, a, a particular mindset. We, we live in a world where things are, are of a mindset of either or. And this either or mindset of this world that we live in tends to help us or encourage us to see things as it's either one thing or it's something else. For instance, feel, along to, feel free to play along if you'd like to. You're rich or you're poor. There's light there's dark, there's joy, there's sadness, sorrow, good. There's rest, there's labor, right? We live in a world of either or, including things are oftentimes described as being either good or bad. You and I know that the world, when we tend to look at the world, we tend to look at it as, as the opposite extremes. This is the either-or mindset. And this either-or mindset, I believe, also encourages us, or, or it prevents us, maybe is the better way to say that, it prevents us from seeing that there is actually another mindset. You see, it's not just either-or. It can also be a both-and mindset. And it's hard for us to see that, so I'm going to give you some examples of what this might look like in your life. Examples that at first blush, you're going to think, there's no way that that can be something good. For instance, being bone tired after a day of hard labor. And each and every one of you gathered here today would probably say, that's bad, right? We, we don't want to be bone tired after doing a day of hard labor. But the truth is that there can be good in that as well. Being bone tired after a hard day's labor means probably that you've accomplished something, some big task that you had to take care of. And that is a good thing. Or perhaps, perhaps it's being mentally exhausted after completing a major project for school or a major project for your job. And none of us like to be mentally exhausted. And yet, there is some good 
that comes out of that mental exhaustion, what is the good? Well, it's the fact that you've completed, successfully completed that major project that you were working on and struggling with. Or perhaps it's being emotionally spent after dealing with some issue in your life. And none of us like to be emotionally spent where we're just drained emotionally, and yet, if you're emotionally drained after dealing with an event or something going on in your life, it probably means that you've resolved that issue, that that issue has been taken care of. And so even though you're emotionally spent, that thing is no longer there, if you will, in your life. You see, it's true. It's true in life that there are things that are either or mindsets, but there are also, it's also true that there are things that are a both and mindset. And my dear friends, this is true in today's reading. You see, the righteousness of God is both and. The righteousness of God is a disturbing and terrifying thing. But it is also a good and gracious thing. You see, the righteousness of God should be disturbing to you. It should terrify you to your very soul. Because God is righteous. His righteousness is perfect. His righteousness is, de is the, that which demands you to be perfect. Which demands you to be completely and wholly and obedient to his law. You see, this is what the Apostle Paul is talking about in parts of our reading for today. The righteousness of God is disturbing and terrifying because of his nature. You see, God demands you and I to be perfect. He actually wants you to be completely obedient and without sin. And what does the Apostle Paul say? <laughs> All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that is terrifying. It's terrifying because you and I recognize that we cannot save ourselves. No matter how much we try. No matter how many promises we make and how many times we say we won't do it again. We will never ever be good enough. We will never ever measure up to God's righteousness. And that is disturbing. That is terrifying. Because God demands it. You see, the law, the, the ten holy words that God wrote upon the heart of every single person, the law tells you and tells me when we sin. Each day when we examine ourselves, the conclusion we come to is, Lord, I have sinned. I have fallen short of your glory and I deserve punishment for my sin. This is why the righteousness of God is disturbing. This is why it's terrifying, because God is a judging God. There has to be judgment and punishment for sin in order for him to be righteous and holy and just. And that, if you and I lived in an either-or world, that would lead us to despair. That would lead us to hopelessness because there would be no hope for you and for me. Because we have sinned and we have fallen short of the glory of God. But God's righteousness is not an either or situation. It's that not that mindset. It's a both and mindset. You see, it's true. It's true that God's righteousness is dis disturbing and terrifying, but it's also good and gracious. You see, God's righteousness is so great, it's so good, it's so gracious, is that He doesn't hold you and me accountable for our sins. He knows you've done it. <laughs> he knows I've done it. There is no way to hide our sins from an all-seeing, all-knowing God. He knows what we've done. But the good and gracious 
nature of God's righteousness is that he doesn't hold it against us. You see, the word of God from the very beginning, from Genesis 3.15, where God made a promise to the serpent, after Adam and Eve disobeyed, after they brought sin and death into the world, God made a proclamation to the serpent. He said, between you and the woman, I will put enmity. Between your seed and her seed, I will put enmity. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. God made a promise that he would fix the situation. And from that point forward in the entirety of Scripture, from the Old Testament on into the New Testament, God's word was preparing us for the one to come. God's word was preparing us for the righteous one to come to gain our righteousness back. You see, God's plan all along was not for you and I to be perfectly obedient because he knows that we can't. His plan all along was to send his son, Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one of God, who would take on our flesh, who would become like you and like me. He would become human. God the Son, the second person of the Holy Trinity, born of the Virgin Mary, comes into the world to live our life. To live our life perfectly under the law, in our stead and in our place, because we can't do it. You see, that righteousness of God is good and gracious, and it does what we can't do for ourselves. Jesus fulfills the law for you. Where you have failed, where I have come short and failed, Jesus fulfills it perfectly. So when he goes to the cross to be the propitiation for our sins, which is a, just a fancy biblical word that means this, that Jesus has borne God's wrath for us. He has paid the price that has to be paid for our sins. <clears throat> On the cross, the serpent bit Jesus' heel, but he crushed his head, and he paid for each and every one of your sins. The sins that you were born with, the sins that you've committed up to this very day, the sins that you're committing now, and the sins that you'll commit later on today. Jesus has already borne them on himself, and he's paid your debt. He's paid my debt. And he has rescued us and delivered us from our sins. And this is God's righteousness. You see, you and I should never look for righteousness in the law because we will never find it there we should look for God's righteousness in his beloved son who lived died and rose from the dead for us and for our salvation because in him you and I will be completely and totally satisfied we will not want for anything when it comes to God's righteousness you see Jesus is God's answer for all that assails us Jesus is God's answer to your sin. Jesus is God's answer to your death. Jesus is God's answer to your eternal life and the resurrection on the last day. God's righteousness is not either or. It's not up to you to save yourself. God's righteousness is perfect and complete in Jesus Christ and he has done everything that needs to be done for your salvation. It is finished, Jesus says. Meaning, his work for our salvation is done and it stands complete until that last day. You see, when you come to this place, when you come to this place, whether it's in person or electronically, what I hope you come to hear is God's word. A word that convicts you of your sins. A word that turns you in repentant faith back to Jesus Christ to receive that which he has won for you and freely gives you. A performative word that does everything that God says it will do. Your sins are forgiven and they stand forgiven. 
When you come to this rail to receive the body and blood of Jesus in, with, and under the bread and the wine, you're receiving that which won your salvation for the forgiveness of your sins and the strengthening of our faith, which oftentimes is less than it maybe ought to be. But God calls us to this place so that we can receive that which he pours out upon us. His righteousness. His righteousness in Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in singing our hymn of the day, Thy Works, Not Mine, O Christ, Hymn 565. not mine, O Christ, speak gladness to this heart. They tell me all is done, they bid my fear depart. To whom my hope cast alone for sin atone, Lord, shall I flee? Thy wounds not mine, O Christ, and heal my bruised soul. Thy stripes not mine contain the balm that makes me whole. alone for sin atone Lord shall I flee I cross not mine O Christ has borne the crushing load of sins that once could bear in God is God to whom save thee who canst alone for sin atone for shall I flee thy death not mine O Christ has paid as we confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Having confidence in our justification by grace through faith and having access to the Father in Jesus' name, let us turn our hearts in prayer on behalf of ourselves, the church, and all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you have shown your faithfulness by raising up those in every generation who call your church to repentance and renewal. Continue to raise up voices in our day who herald the truth of your word and proclaim the faith in purity and truth against all enemies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting Father, you do not desire the death of the sinner, but want all to come to faith and life in Christ. Raise up faithful pastors who will preach your word without fail and teach the doctrine delivered to the saints that many may be hear and believe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, your word has been the light and salvation throughout the ages. Help us to bring your grace to those in darkness and grant them freedom through the forgiveness of their sins. Bless the missionaries serving far and near in the new congregations they establish in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of power and might, you have established governments and the order of law for the protection of all people and to preserve the freedom to worship you in spirit and truth. Grant to President Trump, Governor Edwards, the Congress of these United States and the legislature of our state wisdom, humility, and integrity <coughs> that all may enjoy true justice and the protection of life from its conception to its natural end. Be with all who serve in the military, especially Katie, Colin, Brent, Mark, Kristen, and Dalton. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy and gracious God, your powers revealed chiefly in showing mercy to those in need. Give to the sick healing and to the troubled peace, to the grieving comfort, and to the dying peace. Hear us first on behalf of Carlton, Nikki, Janet, Doug, Chris, Kurt, Billy, David, Scott, Dan, Irene, Margie, Abigail, Lee, Larry, Walter, Bob, Donna, Ann, Johnny, Donna, Jack, Pat, Mark, Glenda, Angie, James, Carlo, Faith, Ola May, Cindy, Dana, Deanna, Joel, June, Patty, Bill, Justin, Jim, Alice, Dylan, Ronnie, Mary, Cherie, Ron, Addison, Jamie, Emily, Ruby, Jody, Jeanette, Lana, Claire, Missy, Susie, Al, Dana, Randy, Midge, the May family, Connie, Evelyn, Karen, Owen, Max, Brittany, Grady, Francisco, Judy, Brad, Eldon, Hannah, Nick, Eva, Jeff, Pete, Neil, Andrea, Joan, May, Jim, Susan, Patty, Jonathan, John, Berna, Lee, Dauphine, Jerry, Camille, Philip, Sharon, Dave, Jean, Lottie, the Wolf family, Rachel, those impacted by disasters of nature and man, for couples who long for a child, for couples who are expecting, and those we name in our hearts silently before you. According to your gracious promise, grant patience to those in tribulation and trial. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have given great gifts to your people, especially the gift of another year of life for Annette, John, Billy, Caitlin, Brett, Joanne, and Nancy. For another year of wedded bliss for Alan and Cheryl and Robert and Michaela as they celebrate their anniversaries this week. You've provided resources to provide for their own needs and for the poor. Bless the agencies and programs of your church by which your people give aid and support to those in need, especially through the ministry programs of this congregation. Help us to provide gainful employment to all people, that they may enjoy the fruits of their labors and honor you with the works of their hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Amen. prayer. Gracious God and Father, your own Son has set his table among us, and gives us his own flesh and blood to be the bread of heaven that feeds us everlasting life and the cup of salvation in which our thirst is satisfied forever. 
give us your Holy Spirit that we may commune worthily and in repentance and faith feast upon this holy sacrament. Bring us at last to that day when all earthly divisions will cease and we will be one people before the altar of the Lord. Until that day, preserve among us your word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O faithful Lord, throughout the ages you spoke hope through the prophets until that day when you delivered up your own Son to be our Savior and our Redeemer. Bless those who are just learning the gospel, and bless us with the desire to know and keep your holy word. Encourage your people to avail themselves of the grace of confession and absolution so that they may forgive one another and live in the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, we pray you to grant us all good things that will benefit us in body and soul and to prevent anything harmful to us or to our salvation. Teach us to live in contentment with your will and purpose and in freedom that you alone supply to serve you with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as our service will continue with the service of the sacrament. Uh, normally at this time of our service, we'd be taking up a formal gathering of the offerings, the gifts and tithes that the people of God return to the house of the Lord. I encourage you that if you haven't already done so, you may place them in the offering plates at the rear of the sanctuary. For those of you worshiping uh, from afar, we encourage you to continue to support the work of the congregation as you normally would. Uh, you can send your gifts and offerings into the church directly. Or you can call me if you'd like to drop them off. Just make sure, please call me on my cell phone to make sure that I'm here before you make the trip. Our organist will play a little music uh, interlude as I prepare the table for the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who having created all things, took on human flesh, and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship. With the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. 
In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to stand as you're able for the dismissal. Now this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace and joy. Amen. Our service will continue with the post communion canticle. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He recalls his promises and leads his people forth in joy. With shouts of thanksgiving, alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage that on the day of his coming, we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, 657. Oh.
Once again, and I'm glad you're able to join us on this, the Festival of the Reformation, uh, Reformation Sunday, as we gather together to remember what God did through Martin Luther to rediscover the gospel and proclaim that truth to the entire world that all may come to know the truth of salvation in Christ Jesus apart from any work of the law. Uh, the announcements are in the green sheet uh, for those of you who are present uh, in person, that is. And uh, the Green Sheet is a devotional resource for individuals, families, and small groups built around the orders of daily prayer found in our Lutheran service book, our hymnal. Um, if you'd like a copy of that, please see me, uh, contact me, and we'll send one to you. It's a laminated copy, so you can use it at your kitchen table. You don't have to worry about spilling coffee or spaghetti sauce or whatever on it. It can be cleaned up, as it were. And um, it also contains our reading plan to read through the Bible in uh, two years. We'll be reading, uh, we're in the Song of Solomon, and we'll start the book of Isaiah, which some people refer to as the fifth gospel, uh, but uh, we'll start that this, next, this coming week. On the inside of the bulletin are those that have requested prayers uh, from the congregation, as well as uh, uh, those that have uh, rejoiced in God's good gifts. Um, and then on the back are the announcements. Uh, there is a, an electric wheelchair available. If you want information, there's two blue sheets, flyers, uh, um, on the glass wall in the cross hallway, one on each end of the building. Um, you can grab that and contact the party mentioned there and uh, to, to find out more about that. Um, I'm back, obviously, uh, as you're looking at me. Uh, but um, it, So we'll resume individual communion services for individual households, that is, uh, this, uh, this week. But it's going to be by appointment, so just call me uh, for those of you who are at home. If you don't feel comfortable coming out and coming to church, uh, please call me and we'll come, we'll, I'll come to your house and we'll, we'll be socially distant, maybe on your front porch or whatever the case may be, uh, so that you may receive that wonderful sacrament that God gives through the body and blood of Jesus. Um, coming up in November, later in November, uh, no, excuse me, um, in, uh, well, I think that's got to be, uh, uh, there's a time. So in the month of November, on the Sundays in the month of November, uh, 8th, 15th, and 22nd, the LWML will be taking up uh, free will offerings. Uh, normally, uh, just before Thanksgiving, we have an annual bake sale and Rada kitchen cutlery item sale. Um, in our current circumstances, we're not going to do that. Uh, so they'll be taking up a free will offering during those Sundays of November. And uh, that will be all that money and resources will be going to support Lutheran Bible Translator Society uh, as they seek to put the word of God into the native language of all people. The altar flowers today have been given to the glory of God in honor of Edward Linhart uh, by Steve and Nikki Linhart. Uh, the food of the month for November, this next month, is going to be red beans and rice. Uh, so just put that in the wicker basket in the cross hallway. We try to deliver that once a week to our local Tanji Food Pantry. And uh, there's a stewardship thought for you and a life thought for you based on our readings for, um, some of them are based on the appointed readings for the, uh, this Sunday of the church here, but not Reformation Day. But you can look them up, as it turns out, because you have a Bible at home. So you can do that and uh, be blessed by reading God's word related to those things. All right, so most of you, all of you know that we were gone this past week um, to MD Anderson. Uh, in, in large part, the visit was diagnostic for them. So they um, put Margie through a bunch of different tests and, uh, to get a baseline um, of her, her condition. Um, and we'll be going back next month in the middle of November uh, to have many of those same tests redone uh, to see how things are progressing. Uh, the the uh, doctors uh, did say that... Um, it's too early to tell about the chemotherapy. It normally takes at least two cycles, I guess, of chemotherapy before they start to see or could determine whether or not it's having a positive effect on her cancer. And um, so they'll be requesting some tissue samples as well. This might fall into the category, too much information, I don't know. Uh, but uh, from North Oaks, so they can do a staining test to look for a particular marker. And if this marker is present, that means that uh, she'll be able to uh, also have an immunotherapy drug uh, which should help her, her condition as well. 
So in some sense, uh, we don't know too much more than we knew before we went there, but um, uh, we did meet with all the team that will be uh, administering to her, uh, tending to her care, and uh, we'll be going back uh, next month uh, for a follow-up visit and to see how things are, where things are at at that point. So we, we continue to thank everybody for your thoughts and your prayers and your, your text messages and your cards, and um, we do appreciate them. And I know that many of you um, are looking for ways to help, um, and we, we do appreciate that. Right now, there's not too much help that we need um, uh, in, in, the, in the sense of the way beyond, beyond prayer and lifting her up uh, to God in prayer. Um, so uh, there may come a time when we, we do need that help, and when that time comes, we will certainly ask um, and uh, solicit that. And so uh, we, we ask for your patience uh, you know, right now. Um, she's able to get up and move around the house and do things. Um, uh, so she's, she's uh, in, in you know, good shape under the circumstances. But uh, you know, that may change in the future. So we, we pray that the Lord will give her healing that only he can provide. And um, we ask for you to continue to pray for that and also um, uh, relief from pain in uh, a number of spots in her body. But um, uh, so... I wanted to share that with you because I know many of you are concerned and want to know about how things went. So that's kind of where things are at with that. She starts her next round of chemotherapy on a Wednesday here in Hammond. Um, they'll be here uh, at least for right now. Um, and we'll, we'll see what the Lord has in store for us in, in the future. Uh, so on that note, I hope you all have a blessed week. I hope you can come back next week because we have another festival celebration, uh, All Saints Day. Uh, so the liturgical color will be white if you want to color coordinate. If you don't, that's okay too. Um, but uh, you'll get to sit down during the prayer of the church because we'll be remembering all those who have departed uh, in the, within the congregation, within our families and friends uh, since last All Saints Day. Uh, there is, uh, Scott Miller has requested uh, all the members of the board of directors to uh, go into the fellowship hall the, um, where the whiteboards are for a, for a brief, he said brief meeting. So um, if you're on the board of directors, please, when you exit, please just go over there and attend to whatever the business is that, that he has in store for, for you. Um, with that note, I bid everybody who's worshiping from afar adieu, and hope to see you back next week, whether that's in person or live, via our live stream. Uh, but may the Lord be with you and keep you safe. Uh, that'll conclude our service for today.